Uh, when conducting a social engineering exercise, uh, so whenever when you're working uh, with the client's personnel, you uh, will have to be able to circumvent uh, some security controls. So the most common of them, of course, is antivirus. And uh, on the social channel, you could uh, encounter this uh, antivirus resistance in many points. But most probably there will be some antivirus in the uh, email server. Uh, maybe it will be even some more complicated content uh, filtering solution. Uh, but antivirus will be one of its features. And uh, the second point is uh, most probably uh, the exchange server or whatever uh, mail storage the client uh, is using, right? Uh, and uh, the third point will probably be the endpoint, right? So the client's computer uh, that uh, is used by some employee. And uh, uh, there is a third point where antiviruses are normally deployed. So, mail transfer agent, exchange or other mail storage server, and the uh, endpoint. These three points. A uh, good practice for security is to somehow, uh, how make make this uh, antiviral <laughs> culture somehow uh, diverse, right? To, not to use monoculture, not to install the same engine uh, in all three points of this chain because um, otherwise you will not be able to catch a lot of uh, malicious software right because you fail once you fail in all three points so uh, there are situations when clients use all three protection layers and uh, uh, unfortunately most probably with the little knowledge and uh, a lot of effort you will be able to circumvent all three of them even if the antiviruses are different so how to do that first of all remember that uh, before sending anything before deploying an agent as we call this action before sending the agent via email you have to test it you have to test it in a similar environment so um, reconnaissance and open source intelligence most probably will give you the idea about what is uh, the client's antivirus version, okay? They have to. And uh, uh, knowing this, you will be able to either install uh, this antivirus on your virtual environment and then do some testing, or you can upload uh, your samples, your working prog programs um, to VirusTotal or some analog that uh, will just show you whether a particular antivirus uh, core is uh, catching your stuff, okay? Uh, but yeah, please avoid <laughs> virus total because as uh, more as we use it, uh, we are making all these obfuscation techniques that I'm going to show you uh, less usable. Yeah, so. The more we submit to virus total, uh, the more antiviruses are aware about our techniques. So, in the end of the day, this is the catch and mouse game. But uh, it is not really clear who is uh, the cat and who is the mouse here in this situation, right? So, uh, about the uh, antivirus evasion. So, you will have to take some code and you will have to obfuscate it enough uh, in, to be passed through the antivirus, right? So, for that, there are two basic approaches. So first, there is a veil framework, veil evasion, uh, and uh, it is, as far as I know, installed by default in uh, Kali Linux. Okay, and uh, it has uh, a bunch of payloads, 51 for now. And uh, what you have to know here, basically you are supposed to play with uh, as much of them, as many of them as possible. Uh, however, there are some biases. For example, uh, we'll, show, we'll show this in the later stages of using Veil, but uh, 
you have to know now that by by installer is one of uh, the ways uh, the uh, obscurity mechanism works here so we most probably will be willing to use uh, something of this yeah uh, these are cool too but uh, you have to know that uh, what happens here is basically some polymorphism is employed and uh, the payload is encrypted by, by a short key and once it is run on the host, on the target machine, it simply brute forces the AES key and uh, decrypts itself and then runs from memory. This is uh, less stable than these variants, however, this is more, has more perspective on antivirus evasion. Okay, so let's use something really simple. Let's use, uh, let's say, reverse HTTPS, I guess, right? And uh, yeah, here is uh, the screen with uh, some basic configuration of this payload. This is really very Metasploit like, yeah. So here we can put our host here, what is our host? Okay. Here it is. Set our host to our IP address. And then, I don't know, let's, let's see, info. Yeah, that's basically what we already know. Yeah. And then we run it. Okay. We have to enter a base name by default, it's payload. And we have to use a verification technique. Okay, so let's use default py installer option. So definitely some wine work is performed on the background and the payload generated obfuscated yeah that's it so we have something generated here right in this directory let's just copy it to a shared folder I have between virtual machines yeah and see what arrives to our Windows host okay so there is some kind of payload let's just drag and drop it to, to, to desktop and see what happens yeah that's okay for now <laughs> so at least uh, Microsoft Defender didn't catch it <laughs> 